Jim Kunkel here. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel and set the notification bell to all so that you won't miss any of my new content. Welcome to another episode of Global Topic. Today's topic will be the importance of specifications for protective coatings projects. Joining me today is John McGill, who's a protective coating specialist. Um, and John also uh, works with JPM Consulting. Hey, John, welcome to the program. Thank you, Jim. It's a pleasure to be here. Hey, if you could take a second, uh, take a minute or two, uh, talk a little bit about your background and then also talk about um, you as JPM Consulting, what type of work you do for the protective coatings uh, industry. Uh, very good. Um, well, my, my background, I've got more than 30 years in the protective coatings and linings industry uh, in all different types of roles from um, sales leadership, marketing, uh, project management, uh, technical service, uh, done quite a bit with product development, and most recently uh, ran a, a tech technical service team uh, for field application. Uh, JPM Consulting, LLC, that's uh, a new venture my wife and I are uh, jumping into. I felt like it was something that uh, I had a passion for. I really have enjoyed over the years working with engineers and owners and, and contractors on specifications, uh, design, uh, modifying, uh, uh, tips, hints, uh, so to speak, and uh, looking forward to a new chapter in my life. So, John, you know, in, in layman's terms, what is a protective coating speci uh, specification and why is it critically important to have a specification? Well, you know, I've I've probably answered that question many times over the last several years. Uh, the specification, um, primarily in our discussion today, the protective coating specification is part of a larger specification, typically a project specification that might be hundreds of pages. Uh, the protective coating specification um, really is the owner's requirements, really what they're looking for in a coatings uh, project as far as uh, uh, how to do it. You know, this is what we want. We've got a series of parts in the specification that's going to uh, show what type of requirements we have to complete this project. So how can a protective coating specification, you know, how can it add a layer of protection for owners that award contracts, you know, based on the lowest bid? Excellent question, Jim. Um, you know, I've been asked that many times from owners. Um, really what the owner would like is to have a group of bidders that are have sim similar qualifications bidding on a project that will give them um, numbers that are, that are somewhat equal. Uh, and then if it's a low bid situation, you know, they would take the low bid. Uh, probably the best method to do that is to write a strong specification, very concise, accurate, you know, let the prospective bidders really know what the project is and what their requirements are. Um, I would recommend that you add qualifications for the applicators. Uh, what kind of training, what kind of testing, um, you know, organizations like SSPC, NACE, others have done a really good job with training programs and, 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 and creating uh, qualification and certification programs that are excellent. Uh, and and th that's the type of information that an owner would really want to put in a specification. So, you know, industry best practice has a protective coating specification as part of a coatings project contract, you know, and it details the qualitative and, and, and quantitative requirements of a project. Why should an owner write a prescriptive spe specification? Um, a prescriptive specification, basically, owner is going to dictate everything that happens on the project. Um, I would say that you would want a prescriptive specification if you had uh, a critical path, you had environmental conditions, you had, uh, uh, let's say, on a highway project, you can only shut down the road for so long. Uh, let's say there was health and safety issues. Um, so you'd want to, the, the owner would really want to control the specification and the work that was being uh, required to complete the, the project. 
So in a, the other aspect of a prescriptive uh, specification, um, if the owner is literally telling the contractor what to do, um, if there's any uh, issues or faults or, or uh, shortcomings, uh, they can fall back on the owner. Is that correct? You know, it really depends on how the spe specification is written and, and really the warranty uh, wording. Um, if the owner's making all the decisions, it's really up to the owner to make sure that they complete the project um, by directing the contractor with proper means and methods. Um, in my experience, um, the contractors or I'm sorry, the owners do understand that if there are issues and, and they will uh, make sure the repairs are completed um, just to make sure that uh, the project is going to meet their requirements. Oh, very good, very good. So is it important that specifications require contractors to submit work plans, you know, including uh, quality control hold points? And if so, I mean, why? Excellent question. Um, you know, work plans, I, I think when you look at really specification development over the last 25, 30 years. I mean, I remember days when there was one page and really all it was telling you was this is what we're going to coat and this is the, these are the products we want and in the section. Uh, now with work plans, you know, our contractor base are, are much more sophisticated. They, they really thrive on training um, within their management ranks and their employees. Um, so a work plan really helps them keep the process in a step-by-step -step, um, um, uh, basis, um, and I and I I believe it's 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 very critical for, for a contractor to have that. They don't they don't skip something and have to go back and redo it, which sometimes with scheduling really um, could cost a lot of money down the road. You know, John, this has been a great conversation that we've been having. You know, in closing out this uh, interview, is there anything that we didn't talk about that you would want to cover with the viewers of this episode? You know, I, I'm a huge fan of pre-bid conferences, especially when you're talking about um, trying to qualify or keep get a group of bidders that are, are sim have similar qualifications. Um, you know, for the bidders to have the opportunity to meet with the owner or engineering firms uh, prior to bid, to get an opportunity to, to look at the structure, uh, to measure the structure, to take uh, photos so they can actually sit down and put together, you know, a bid that really um, uh, makes, uh, makes sense for them to submit to the owner when it becomes, when the bid, bid time comes. Um, uh, the questions, the relationships that are built over the years. I, on a personal side, I think I've made more relationships or built more relationships with engineers at pre-bid meetings because many times you don't get an opportunity to talk to the project engineers and gives you an opportunity to really meet with that, that group and, and discuss the, the products, the surface prep, the uh, QC, QA requirements. So I think pre-bids, I think warranties I, you know if the owner really wants a warranty make sure you've got good language in there and, and the contractor understands the warranty because many times at the end of the project um, the contractor's trying to cr uh, into many times the general contractor is trying to close out a project and there's no warranty nobody knew about the warranty but the owner wanted one but it wasn't listed or it was vaguely listed in the specification so um, I would say those are two things that that you may really want to consider when you're designing a specification. You know, I will make sure that I put the uh, LinkedIn um, contact uh, link for, for John. Uh, so that if anyone would want to connect with John, the please do so. And uh, John, thank you so much for the opportunity to have a conversation with you today. My pleasure, Jim. It was great to see you and uh, look forward to seeing you very soon. Hey, have a great day. Thank you. You too, Jim. So, Joe, for you know, the layperson who's watching this episode who might only think that corrosion engineering is related to, you know, metal corrosion, you know, as an overview, what else does corrosion engineering relate to? Uh -huh.